All right, thank you and welcome everyone to what is our 30th episode of Beyond the Badge. I know our audience is filling in right now. I wanna welcome you all. Thank you for joining us uh, here today for another incredible episode. This marks two and a half years of Beyond the Badge episodes. And for those of you who are likely new to our audience, we always have many who are here to support an honoree, a celebrant from our 17 stories we're gonna to share today. Uh, you're here for them and it's probably your first time here. These are stories that come from our system daily huddle. Every single day, our most senior leadership across the entire 43,000 employee health system come together for a, a senior huddle where they go over operations for the day to make sure across Mount Sinai we're set for a high quality, safe day. But they have a pause during every single huddle where one leader out of that large group, one leader has their chance to celebrate one employee or perhaps a team, whether it's a patient letter, a star recognition, peer recognition that they just loved, uh, a one-time moment of excellence or a spotlight of a special program or project that's been completed at their area. They're so proud. They look for that one story that they're most proud to share that really lives our values of someone going beyond the badge, beyond in their work to something really special. And they share that story. Uh, and that happens every day. And what we started to do with these episodes is it's our way to collect them. And we thank our colleagues, Joseph Myrie, uh, Swati Garg and Hillary Polly who lead those huddles. They collect the stories, they send them to us so we can invite all of you, the many in our audience who come month after month uh, to listen and be inspired by these incredible stories. You know, I said there's a lot of you who are new, and if you're new, make sure you get into the chat. It's it's a webinar, so you're comfortable, you're back there, maybe you're having a coffee or some lunch, but use the chat feature. That's your way, send it to everyone, and start letting these celebrants know how much you appreciate and value them. Give them shout outs, especially when they're on camera, uh, shout out their stories. And those who are regulars, who've been here for many of our 30 episodes, are our leadership. Our leaders continue to come back and be inspired by these stories. It's our monthly rejuvenation uh, to be really connected to purpose about what it means to be excellent at Mount Sinai. So I always like to start with a couple of our leaders who are in the room. I, I asked a couple of them to come backstage with me. Uh, and first off, I wanna introduce uh, someone who's here at, at pretty much all of these episodes, our Chief Operating Officer at the Mount Sinai Hospital, Jonathan Kiriaku. Jonathan, why don't you come on up and, and say hello to our, our audience and our honorees today. Oh, we're losing your, your microphone there. You're off mute. Maybe get a little closer to your, your computer if you can. Can you hear me now? Yeah, see, you're used to be backstage watching I and mean, relaxing, and now you're on. Yes, you're good. I just got a new camera, and every so often it pops up that my microphone is not working. So, uh -oh. pardon me. Wait, um, you're all good now. Let's have a, a nice welcome for our honorees today. Thanks for having me, Steve, and thanks to, and congrats to everybody who's who's going to be here presenting today. Um, Steve kind of alluded to it. I, I do join most of these every month, um, mostly not as a as a speaker, but really just listening. And, and, you know, I always kind of tell people when they ask me what I love about working at Mount Sinai, and I always say, honestly, it's the people. And, and really, this is really just, you know, a, a summation of all the good things that we do here that always happen that people just don't even realize how much good happens here. Um, and I truly mean that. Um, so really congrats to everybody. I can't wait to hear what is being presented today. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Congrats. thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you for being such a, a regular at our, our episodes. I know not only do the, the leaders enjoy the stories from their site, but just seeing the whole system and how we're all together, as, as Dr. Brennan Carr says, our one Mount Sinai, this is one of those moments where we all come together and we see the great work happening at all of our locations. Um, another leader who's, who's here, uh, who is so passionate about employees and our employee health and our employee engagement is Dr. Deb Marin. I'm gonna have Dr. Marin come up. She's our, our George and Marion Blumenthal professor professor of psychiatry, as well as the director of the Ombuds Office, the director of the Center for Spirituality and Health, and the director for the Center of Stress, Resilience, and Personal Growth in the Icon School of Medicine. Dr. Marin, thank you so much for being here. I'd love to give you a chance to, to say thank you and, and welcome our audience today. Hi, Steve. I, I want to thank you and TDL and all the folks here. You know, I've been in Sinai for longer than someone who's probably been alive. And I can tell you that uh, to what Jonathan said, we have amazing folks who work in our system and it's tough in healthcare. So I first wanna thank everybody who's in the room and friends and family. You know, It's important not only to collect these stories about how wonderful people are, but to share them. 
-hmm. it's 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 internal information like this that makes people feel more, more fulfilled in their jobs and i truly believe that those these folks who went above and beyond what's expected of them which many people do but even even to a higher level i suspect means a lot to their family and friends as well mm -hmm. So, you know, this is kind of like a fluidity of, of well-being that erupts from this. And I happen to be involved in some ways in caring for the folks who work in Mount Sinai. And um, people work very hard. And I, I can't wait to hear the stories. I'm sure some will resonate with me. I've definitely given shout outs many times to folks. And um, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, well, thank you, Dr. Moran. I know you're going to enjoy it, and you're, you're so right. It's not enough to these stories, and we know they happen, but to share them and feel inspired by them is so important. And again, shout out to any, if there's a, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a, a sibling, anyone out there, it's here for a family member. We love to know you're out there. I'm gonna try to get in focus here for you. Uh, we love to know you're out there coming on to support your family. It just warms my heart to see it uh, and how much pride you're feeling at these, these moments too. So let's jump right into the stories. I've got 17 great ones to share. There's a resources tab, follow along with us. There's a program in there. There's a link to star recognition. You can send a star to a colleague. You might be inspired to give your own recognition out today. Um, there's also a little page for speakers that has a little bio piece about each of our honorees and you can follow along. But do know that I might skip around a little bit. There are some people who are with patients. They're trying to join in between uh, meetings with patients and, and appointments with patients. So be aware we might skip the order a bit. Uh, but we're going to do our best to stick with you uh, and give you a heads up on that. Um, we also want to thank the speakers. The people who are speaking and presenting these stories are members of our Mount Sinai Spotlight Committee. These are leaders around the organization who are deeply committed to the patient experience and to the employee experience, what we refer to now as the human experience here at Mount Sinai. They are leaders in that area at their locations, and they're proudly reading the stories today. I'm actually going to start. We've got a special treat. We have Erica Rubenstein, who's our Vice President of Patient Experience for the System. She's filling in to cover Morningside and West stories today. And we're going to start with our team. We have one team story to share. It's from Mount Sinai Morningside. Uh, and it's a group uh, from several different areas. It kind of follows a patient journey, which I know Erica is all about watching that patient throughout that whole sum of their care. Diana Benitez, Manuela Castillo, Dr. Nicholas Cerrone, Leslie Marhone, and Joan McCoy. I don't know if they can all make it, but we have a few of you. So thanks for joining. And, and Erica, I'm going to let you read this first story. Wonderful. Thank you for having me. Today, we would like to recognize a large team of caregivers at Mount Sinai Morningside, each of whom cared for a patient and his family with immense kindness and compassion during his final days. The patient's family writes, we had an amazing experience at this emergency room and hospital. The emergency room doctors and nurses acted quickly and were so caring to us and to my, and to my father. It is the first time we felt that doctors and nurses truly listened to our concerns in regards to my father's health. Special thanks to Dr. Nick Cerrone and his team, who always took the time to explain all proposed care plans. He was so caring. He outdid himself with always caring for my dad and his family. We, if we weren't in the hospital, he would always call us and keep us updated on dad's progress. Thanks to nurses Joan, Manuela, Leishley, the nurses on the seventh floor, and all the hospice nurses on the fourth floor that cared for my father until the end of his days. Another special thank you to Diane and Fiona, the social workers assigned to his case. They went above and beyond to make sure my dad's insurance was up to date and he had all the care he needed. They really advocated for him. And because of both of them, dad was able to pass in the most peaceful way possible with us by his side. Everyone, including the security officers and the cleaning staff were so professional, friendly and caring. Thank you all for treating my father with the utmost kindness and care. Yeah, thank you, Erica. And thank you, Manuela, Lashley, and, and Diana, representing this team, both from the nursing and the social workers that were involved in this story. And so many of these stories come from the family members who are really observing everything that's happening for the patient uh, and are really paying attention to all of these experiences. And they, and they highlighted all of you through this. So, you know, 
the one thing about this experience that was described as kind and caring, no matter where they were in their process, kind and caring kept coming up over and over those same words. Um, who can speak uh, to the, the community and culture at Mount Sinai Morningside that creates this kind of experience of caring and kindness for your patients and families? Um, I think for me, on behalf of like the night team at Seven West, I can just always say that we try as much as we can to radiate positivity and good energy and good vibes, given they're going to be in an environment that is completely new for them. Unfortunately, after 9 p.m., family has to leave. So it's just us that they're, I like to joke around that they're stuck with, but it's more like if we make sure they're happy, we make sure they're calm and everything is good keep them up to date with their health, even if it's like, hey, tomorrow in the morning, you can expect this, or I'm going to give you this medicine, we're going to do this. Just not throw anything. It just helps a lot. And even if it's talking to a family member at 6 a.m. because they're worried, it's the bare minimum we can do, but as long as we can help families and patients and make sure we're just, we're giving kindness back. And it's always great because kindness will come back to you somehow. Yeah. And that was the theme that came up most, kindness. That word just kept being repeated throughout the experience. Um, you know, it was really wonderful. I don't want to put everyone on the spot. Does anyone else have something to add to Manuela, what Manuela said? Good. Happy to let her take the lead on behalf of the team. Or are you trying to say something, Lashley? You're on, on mute. Okay. Um, I just want to say that just like um the... Mopsa and I say we have to find a way. We have to find a way to make our patients happy. And also, I would say you always want to treat patient and family member. You always want to treat them the way you would like to be treated. And also, I would say it's a team effort. Beautiful. Thank you, Alexa. You're absolutely right. We find a way is not just making the discoveries in healthcare that are the future of medicine. It is the everyday moments we have to find a way to give kindness, to find a way to care for people in a personal and connected way. We all have that opportunity to find a way. So very beautifully said. Thank you so much to this team, uh, this group. And, and we're so glad we could share this patient story, and this patient letter. Thank you. All right, we're going to jump around a little bit. I know we have Dr. Ali Zaidi here, who's jumped on in between caring for patients, had a full patient slate today. But we wanted to get his story when he was able to arrive. So I'm going to jump a little bit in our program uh, so we can let him get back to patient care. Um, he's from Mount Sinai Hospital Faculty Practice Leadership, who shared this story for Dr. Ali Zaidi. And I'll have Amy Nelson share this story. Thank you, Steve. A patient's father called to share a positive experience with Dr. Ali Zaidi. The patient is a 51-year-old with Down syndrome and congenital heart disease. He was recently in the ED, admitted from a podiatry appointment with a fever. Dr. Zaidi, who is a congenital heart disease specialist, visited the patient in the ED. The father acknowledged how he loves the way Dr. Zaidi treats his son with the utmost respect, and he appreciates the connection Dr. Zaidi has with his son. Dr. Zaidi went above and beyond to make sure that the patient was discharged as soon as possible and ensured the patient could avoid unnecessary testing. The family is so grateful for the dedication Dr. Zaidi has for his work and towards his patients. Yeah, thank you, Amy. And Dr. Zaidi, thank you for taking some time to step in between patients to come join us and, and talk uh, with us in response to this story. Um, you know, this particular, this parent particularly notes their appreciation for the connection you made with their son and how you treat him with the utmost respect. Um, can you tell us about your commitment to caring for, for all your patients that leads to this type of emotional and appreciative response from yeah. patients and their families? Yeah, but thanks, Steve. And, and thanks, Amy. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for allowing me to be here. So I'll just take uh, just a couple of seconds. Uh, so what I do is I do uh, congenital heart disease. If you think about this, these are kids who are born with heart conditions and they're now actually adults. So they're in their you know, teenagers, 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, so it's all about a connection, uh, Steve, as you said, and it's really the Sinai way. It's finding, finding a way. These kids grow up and they're young adults and they suddenly go from the world of pediatrics into the world of adult medicine. And mm. suddenly they're in the ER, they're, they're 22 years old, mom and dad are with them, and they're not in a pediatric environment anymore. So you've got to build that connection so you can transition them so, so, so they can get the care. And this particular kid, um, young man, actually, um, not to belabor this, but 
actually was syndromic and he needed somebody there who he could connect with because otherwise it was a big room with a bunch of strangers. Right. Um, so just having somebody there that he had seen and just walk him through the nuances is all that was needed. And we got him home and it's all about teamwork. It really is. Right. Right. Well, that's wonderful. And picturing that unique scenario uh, of, and I, I hadn't been thinking about how you, you know, you've been this for their entire life. That transition must be very difficult when you had the one doctor that you're meeting with and one team and you become an adult. So continuing to to find them and meet in the ED, that's a, a special moment and, and a wonderful connection. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. It's, it really is about teamwork. I mean, it's what we do here, you know, but the, the transition from pediatrics to adult medicine, mm -hmm. it's very hard for some of these young yeah. kids. Um, so thank you, everybody, wow. for, for allowing me to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to step away and come join us. Great to see you. All right. Thank you. Now we're going to go back in our program. One person who unfortunately couldn't be here had a conflict, a housekeeper at Mount Sinai West, Rhonda Benjamin. Really wonderful patient letter. Since I knew she wasn't going to make it, I took the full story and put it in that resources tab. So if you go want to see a photo of Rhonda and read her full story, it's right there. Um, it was about a patient saying how Rhonda always greeted us with a smile and a kind word, making us feel at ease during a challenging time. It's clear that Ms. Rhonda takes great pride in her work and genuinely cares about the well-being of the patients at Mount Sinai West. That's housekeeper Rhonda Benjamin. And the full story is in that resources tab. We're sorry she couldn't, couldn't make it here today due to a conflict. Um, but I'm going to go back into our order. Let's go to Mount Sinai, Brooklyn. Sharon Hamdamova is going to join us. She's our celebrant from Brooklyn. And I'll have Katrina Bravo come and read this story for our nurse, Sharon Hamdamova. Congratulations to everyone so far. And I'm happy to present Sharon Hamdamova, who has been recognized uh, by a patient who writes, I want to bring to your attention the superb work of nurse Sharon Hamdamova on One North, who gave to my wife such competent and kind care. My wife recently passed away at a rehab center, and during this very difficult time for me, one area of consolation is to replay in my mind the images of my wife and Sharon smiling. I have been working in healthcare facilities for over 30 years, and I have never seen anyone <clears throat> with a variety of much needed skills as Sharon has. No matter what challenge my wife was going through, Sharon had a natural ability to treat the ailment and soothe the soul. I have a great deal of gratitude, not only to her, but to all of the staff on One North who took such good care of my wife. I want to let you know how happy I am for you that you have such a shining example of what a nurse can be on your staff. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Katrina. And, and Sharon, this patient recognizes your ability to treat the ailment and what I really loved to soothe the soul. Um, can you tell us about your, your approach with patients and how you balance uh, that meets their both clinical and their emotional needs? And on mute. Sharon, come up off mute for us. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today, and I'm a little stressed. Uh, this family, to be honest, he was the best husband I ever saw. He was very kind, and the patient also. It's um, very sad that she passed away, and after three weeks, I, we got a phone call in the unit because she was discharged already, and he called, and he, he told us that she died she passed away and he was very glad with the whole one or team care and i had her like for two weeks i was her nurse that time and to be honest it's the they're both very good people it's not only them i know it's being a nurse being a healthcare provider it's very tough work mm -hmm. we always have to have a patient's good heart because everyone's family can be in that spot or ourselves our mom our dad and I'm very glad that he brought, that he sees that we nurses, we the healthcare providers and do the hard work. And I'm very strived about that. Every day I come to work, I try to forget all my problems, whatever we have in our life and try to do my best to give the good care that I really can. And I think, um, thanks everyone for the time yeah. and Thank you, Sharon. That was really wonderful. And to think that it was three weeks later and, then, and that she passed and then 
the husband felt so compelled to write and let you know and inform you and say thank you again, you know, even with that gap in between, it shows how meaningful that relationship was and how you cared for him. That's what I'm saying. It's very sad to lose someone that you love. And mm -hmm. he find the time, he got some moment for us to recognize and to honor our care. I'm very glad for him. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, Sharon. Great to see you. And thank you, Katrina. All right, next up, we're going to go to another patient letter. It came in from Mount Sinai Beth Israel employee, Avian Hyatt Reed. She's in our new behavioral health center at Mount Sinai Beth Israel. And we'll have Christine represent our BI team and share this next story for Avian. Thank you, Steve, and congratulations to all today's celebrants. Avian Hyatt Reed, a unit support associate in nursing psychiatry at the Mount Sinai Behavioral Health Center, is a role model a great patient advocate, is thorough in her work, and has touched the lives of many. Recently, a family member contacted leadership to express her gratitude for Avion. She shared how Avion's excellence, compassion, and courtesy during a phone conversation to inquire about her brother's care made her feel like as if she was calling home. This family member, a fellow nurse, and our leadership team all share in the pride of recognizing Avion's commitment to serving patients and the community. Thank you, Avion. This is a well-deserved recognition for all of your hard work and dedication to the Mount Sinai Behavioral Health Care Center for our team. Thank you, Christine. And Avian, I, I just love that line of how speaking to you felt like calling home. It's such a memorable and special line. How do you do it? How do you create this warm, caring, welcoming feeling when interacting with patients and families? Um, well, when it comes to interacting with the patients and their families, I give them the same respect and compassion as if they were my family or if I was in their shoes. Um, I feel like in healthcare is really important to show that compassion and the kindness and respect um, during their time of need and to the families also. I feel like that's really, really important, you yeah. know, being that they can't do much in their position. Mm -hmm. Well, well, thank you so much. And we know we're all at Mount Sinai very proud of the new center uh, on Rivington Street, um, the Behavioral Health Center, and to be providing such excellent, kind, compassionate care that gives that first impression to our patients who are attending or, and going to that facility some, for the first time is, is really wonderful to see. And in this case, it was a fellow nurse who wrote this letter to share it. So it's someone who really knows what to look for, for care and compassion. And you are top of the charts for, for her as well. Excellent thank story. You. Thank you so much, Avian. Thank you. All right. And Christine, I believe we do not have Janine here just yet. We're going to come back to you. If Janine Silver can, can make it, we're going to keep our eye out for her when she can join. So stand by. Um, we have a, another physician from Mount Sinai, Queens, we're going to go to Dr. Stella Rubina. So Zach, if you're ready on the spot, I know I jumped one and we have Dr. Rubina here. I'm going to turn this to our Mount Sinai, Queens committee member, Zachary Key. Thank you, Steve. So the story reads, a patient's family member writes, I want to express my deepest gratitude and admiration for the exceptional care provided by Dr. Stella Rubina during my father's time under her palliative care. Dr. Rubina consistently demonstrated a remarkable ability to provide comfort and support, not only to my dad, but also to our family. Her genuine concern for my father's well-being was evident in every interaction, from her attentive listening to her thoughtful explanations to treatment options. What truly set Dr. Rubina apart is her unwavering commitment to the comfort of her patient. She took the time to truly understand my father's physical discomfort, but always provided us with a sense of peace and acceptance at the end of his life. Her warmth and kindness created a supportive environment where I felt safe to express my fears and concerns openly. Her ability to forge such meaningful connections is a testament to her exceptional bedside manner and genuine compassion. Please convey my deepest appreciation to Dr. Rubina for her exceptional service and unwavering ded dedication to her patients. Congratulations, Dr. Rubina. Thank you, thank you, thank you Zach. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think it's just incredible. You know, it's a privilege of a lifetime, they say, to become who you really are. And I think it is a privilege of my lifetime to be able to truly just accompany patients and our families throughout most vulnerable moments in their life and share the journey with them and to be able to give them that sense of, you know, liberty and um, sort of liberation with permission during sometimes hardest of the times and 
to validate and to really support them and comfort them and make sure they don't have that fear of failure as well. And I think, you know, just truly remarkably, it, it is a honor to be through that journey with them. So I really am just great that I can be a small part in their life, serving to the best comfort that we can. Well, well said, Dr. Rubina. And, you know, I want to point out they, they really talked about your rare gift for connecting on a personal level. So bringing that personalized care uh, into every interaction um, is making the difference. And I, I'm, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm I'm sad that the theme today seems to be family members reaching out when a family member has passed. It's the third one that we've had already. But to think of how this is a, a memorable moment, a sad memorable moment in people's lives. And they're thinking of you. They're thinking of the care providers who are there for them, supporting them through it emotionally and taking the time to reach out. It, it really shows us how much these moments are seen right. and what they mean to our families. But I think it's also like um, a way, as much as sad, however, it is also liberating to know that they stood in the most empowerment to be heard and to really carry out to the most of the fulfilling choices to really pursue the legacy in a real time with their family and to be heard, right, and to be seen. So I think that right. is the beautiful part that we were able to care for and provide. It is. It is. It's a beautiful part. Thank you so much. You see the, the hearts fluttering up that show us how much our audience agrees. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Rubina. Zach, we'll have you back for another Queen story a little later on. Um, I think I've got one more in this section, and it is at Mount Sinai South Nassau for Aaron Vasquez. So let's bring Aaron on up and have Olivia McGregor, our colleague out at South Nassau, share this story. Hi. Thank you, Steve. And hi, Aaron. Aaron Vasquez is a recreational therapist on our transitional care unit who consistently goes above and beyond to ensure her parent, her patients are taken care of and have the opportunity to experience socialization and interaction with one another. To promote the best patient outcomes, Erin always demonstrates creativity with planning activities and even utilizes her own lunchtime as an opportunity to eat with patients in the day room. It is clear that Erin truly cares about all of her patients as she is attentive to their emotional needs, learns about their lives, and discusses current events to ensure that they have mental stimulation as part of their healing process. A grateful patient wrote, I cannot say enough about Erin. She is so helpful, kind, caring, and a huge asset to your staff. Another patient states, if it wasn't for Aaron's smile and positive attitude, I would have given up on myself. Her bringing me into the day room to participate in activities gave me the encouragement and hope that I need to overcome my medical problems. Our team is so grateful for Aaron and everything she does for all of our patients. Thank you, Olivia. This is such a unique and wonderful role, and it's making such a difference for patients. I'm, I love that your leadership chose to share, share Aaron's story. And, and Aaron, can you tell us about the personal passion you have for working with your patients and engaging with them in the transitional care unit? Hi, thank you. Um, so my brother is developmentally disabled, um, and he's been going to day programs for as long as I could remember. Um, and that's why I decided to become a recreational therapist. I was always intrigued by what he was doing and how activities were really helping him and his overall, you know, well-being. Um, so I decided to go back to school, get my bachelor's degree, and I really wanted to make a difference in people's lives. Um, so as a recreational therapist, because I'm sure some of you are like, what is a recreational therapist? I've never heard of this before. Um, we focus on social needs, emotional needs, spiritual and cognitive. Um, so my goals here at, on the TCU, the Transitional Care Unit, is to provide social connections through activities um, where I do eat with my residents because it provides just a better experience for them. They're able to trust me um, and they're able to confide in me. I could provide better emotional support um, and it's just their overall well-being and provides a better experience here in the TCU for them. Well, thank you, Aaron. It's so great to hear your origin story of your, your superhero story of where that passion came from, seeing it in others and saying, I'd like to do that. I'd like to give back in the same way. I'd like to provide that kind of care for others. Um, it was really great to hear where that, that inspiration and that passion came from. Thank you. It's an excellent role and, and excellent work with your patients. I'm glad to hear leadership at South Nassau was celebrating. Congrats. All right. And that wraps up our patient story section. You know, as we wrap up that section, I want to give a shout out to a, a special group who's watching uh, here all together. There's actually a Beyond the Badge class 
happening right now. We do these in a lot of these episodes. It's like a watch party. They're in a class called Going Beyond the Badge. My colleague Jody Berry is hosting it with a, a number of colleagues from around the health system attending. And they met about patient experience uh, service. And now they're here watching and learning from you. So your response is you talking about what you bring into the role. You're the teachers uh, along with me here for an actual class. That's how incredible your role model stories are. So not to put more pressure on the people who are still to speak, uh, but there's a class watching and learning from, from your example and, and your commitment and your stories. So we're glad to give a shout out to that class who I know has their own private chat going uh, as they watch. Uh, but let's go into our stories of excellence section. This is some of the one-time events or really remarkable stories that came through um, that weren't from a patient letter or from a star, but just something really special was happening that leadership wanted to share. And the first one is from the FPA Access Center. It's from Marlon Ladino. And I'll have our colleague Sadika Horn come on and read this story for Marlon. Hey, Marlon. Hi, Steve. And Hi. congratulations to all honorees today. I am very, very excited to present um, our, well, definitely a story of excellence for Marlon Ladino from our geriatrics team. She has been in the Access Center for five years. Recently, one of the geriatric providers sent the following thank you note to Marlon's manager. I wanna give a huge kudos to Marlon at the call center. My patient called with odd symptoms and said, I think I'm having a stroke. She did send to the RM, but also told the patient to call 911. The patient did and was indeed having a stroke. The patient is now here and Marlon totally saved her brain. She used excellent clinical judgment and should be commended. Thanks Marlon for your swift thinking and your compassion and dedication to our patients. Yeah, thank you, Sadiqa. This is one of those one-time moments. And Marlon, I'm picturing your, your work every day, the number of calls you get in. And it's really grounding to think, oh, any time an emergency call might come through and you got to lean on your experience and your clinical judgment that this was uh, celebrated for um, to to have this kind of positive outcome and uh, and save this person's brain and life. So how does an experience like this strengthen your own sense of purpose uh, and what drives you to perform so exceptionally every day? Oh, hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Uh, so, yes, actually, this experience, this reinforced uh, my sense of purpose in my job. Mm -hmm. um, this, um, I know now that whatever I do, my words will impact uh, the outcome for the patients. Uh, this also made me like, think that we need to learn every day more and more uh, to continue providing a good uh, service to the patients. I know that my words, uh, my knowledge, my uh, um, uh, my my skills will affect uh, the outcome for the patients, and actually, we they will actually make say, uh, safe lives. That that was this time that will happen this time. So uh, yes, that, that made me think that I have to make a very job, very good job every single day, every right. call, and treat the best I can. Yes, wonderfully said, Marlon. When we're in these roles, you know, every day, you never know when it's a life saving moment. And to hear you speak to this driving your, you know, interest in learning more and what other knowledge can I get that can help me better handle situations like this in the future for no matter what it is that's on the other end of that line. That's inspiring. Uh, and, I, and I hope you do pursue every bit of knowledge you can gain to care for our patients. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Congrats, Marlon. Thank you. Our next story, I, I don't believe Dr. Michael Allen is able to attend. He is busy in the emergency department, a resident in the emergency department, a wonderful story about saving the life of a child who is just in the area. Again, you never know, you're walking the halls, you're in the lobby and there's a child choking uh, on food and was able to help resuscitate, rush to the uh, PEDS ED uh, and save the child's life. And that was our, our story of excellence for Dr. Michael Allen who is in the busy emergency department and not able to get away, but we wanted to say congrats to Dr. Allen. Uh, but we're going to have God's favorite GA come up from Mount Sinai Hospital ambulatory side to read this story of excellence uh, for Jay Reyes. And we're going to bring Jay up. Hey, Jay. And hi, God's favor. Hi there. Congratulations to all of our celebrants. Here's the story. Jay Reyes, an RN in the Respiratory Institute, was instrumental in identifying a system-wide issue where patients' home oxygen orders were being denied or canceled 
due to a lack of medical justification. Jay created the epic dot phrase oxygen, which promotes providers, which prompts providers to document objective findings required for insurance approval. This dot phrase can be used by all providers throughout the system, and this information appears in a matter of seconds when typed into an epic note, making it seamless for even the least tech savvy user. This resolution is relevant, easy to use, and efficient. We are proud of Jay for his daily commitment to quality improvement and patient care excellence. Yeah, thank you, God's favor. And I know Nina Thousand, one of our uh, celebrants later on at the end of today's episode, who used to work for Epic and is in our digital and technology partners, is probably lighting up at this story. Um, Jay, I love it. Um, you saw a problem patients were experiencing and proactively you took ownership and created a solution that's now making a system-wide impact. That's what really elevates this the story of excellence. Um, so how is this an example of the commitment you make every day to improving the patient experience at Mount Sinai. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, commitment is vital every day, and every day is a learning opportunity for me. And as a nurse at Mount Sinai, one of my guiding principles is putting our patients first. And we nurses are ambassadors of health, and we advocate for the needs of our patients. And with this initiative, Patients will have seamless coordination in getting their much needed durable medical equipment, which is the uh, oxygen concentrator. Mm -hmm. um, also, I know we are on a limited time, so I'll make this thank you note very, very quick. Thank you, Mount Sinai <laughs> Health System, for this recognition. To the committee of the Behind the Badge, thank you so much. To, the, to my colleagues at the Respiratory Institute, you're all awesome. You're very wonderful to work with. To my family who are in the West Coast right now, they're watching. Good morning to all of you. My parents, I love you. Um, I would also like to extend my gratitude to our medical director, um, Glenn Chun, and our nurse manager, Jamie Ramsharel, for supporting this initiative. And, you know, this makes all my effort feel worthwhile and inspires me to continue to strive for excellence. I am grateful every day. Well, thank you. The teamwork is coming through and how you thank others for the support that set you into a place to be able to provide this, but making a system-wide impact uh, is just remarkable. And you even nailed right into our mission statement that includes the word seamless coordination. Our commitment to seamless coordination for our patients is part of the Mount Sinai Health System mission statement. Uh, so to just hear you bring that out so naturally shows how much you live it and you live the Mount Sinai way every day. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. All right, I'm glad to hear your family's watching from the West Coast. Enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, and thank you, God's favor. We're going to move into our next section. We have a couple of stories from our Appreciation by Colleagues section. These usually come from Star Recognition. So once again, in our Resources tab, we even have a link to Star. If you haven't sent a Star Peer Appreciation to a colleague yet, get right on there and do that today. you got to be on Mount Sinai's network to do it but you can send a star to a colleague that could end up someday out of the thousands we receive could end up right here on Beyond the Badge. But every single one makes a difference to that individual. One, unfortunately, she was so sad. It came under the weather, wasn't able to make it in today. Um, Carlene Aaron from Mount Sinai Downtown. She works at the Blavatnik Family Chelsea Medical Center was celebrated in the story. I took the whole story this morning and I put it up in the resources tab, but it was celebrating her in the infusion center. A patient came in drenched from the rain you know, had the infusion appointment in the gown, went to put back on the shirt and it was still soaking wet. And she was dedicated and committed to saying, I'm going to find you something and scoured the entire Chelsea Medical Center to find a dry shirt for this patient to wear home. A, a really remarkable story and, and was celebrated by her colleague through a star. Um, I'll go on to the, the next one is from Mount Sinai West Ambulatory. I was celebrated by patients and colleagues. It, was, it could have gone into many categories. I'm going to bring Erica back up to read this story for Quinesha Knox from Radiation Oncology. Hi. Congratulations uh, to everyone and Quanisha. Quanisha Knox has been with the radiation oncology practice for a little over a year and consistently gets praise from patients and staff alike for her exceptional dedication. Her commitment to providing exceptional care makes every patient interaction positive and supportive. Imagine a patient likely experiencing some anxiety or uncertainty about their treatment. Yet Quanisha's calm demeanor instantly puts them at ease. 
Her meticulous attention to detail ensures all their paperwork is in order, streamlining the registration process. This leaves our patients feeling valued and confident and is a true testament to Quanisha's professionalism and empathetic approach. Quanisha's dedication also fosters a spirit of teamwork that extends beyond patients. Her ability to take initiative, anticipate needs, and collaborate seamlessly with colleagues fosters a supportive environment where everyone feels empowered to contribute their best. Her unwavering positivity and resilience inspires colleagues and patients alike, and we are so grateful to have Quanisha on our Mount Sinai West ambulatory team. Very nice. Thank you, Erica. And thank you to everyone shouting out in the chat. You got a lot of fans out there, Quanisha. Uh, and this statement really applauds your commitment to caring for both patients and your colleagues. And in both cases, the same words were used, dedicated, supportive, positive to describe you, whether it's with your patients or with your colleagues. How would you describe the commitment you personally make to caring for your patients and colleagues alike? Uh, hi, I would like to say good afternoon and thank you all. Oh, I just, um, I feel just compassion and just being understanding for me, having family that had suffered with cancer and just taking the time to just understand and be patient with them and just try to help them in the best way you can. I think that always go a long way. You know, it's just sometimes people just need a little uplifting in their spirit and to just speak goodness into them because they are dealing with and battling something that, you know, we don't understand. Some of us don't understand, but it's just always just being kind and just being pleasant. I feel will always bring goodness and make someone's day better and brighter. Yeah. No, it mm -hmm. starts with being patient. It starts with being understanding, seeing mm -hmm. every patient as themselves. And then I just love that phrase that I'm picturing with you. I'll, I'll picture your face in this phrase now going forward is bring goodness to them. How can I mm -hmm. find a way to, to bring goodness into this person's day, into this person's mm -hmm. life? And it's, yes. a, it's a really wonderfully said. Oh, um, yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you, Quinisha, and we're so glad we got to, to share this story today. Okay. <laughs> Congrats, and thank you to all your fans out there who are, are shouting and, and cheering for you. Uh, we've got one more section today, and that's our employee spotlight section. This is a chance to spotlight some very special programs or work being done around the system that a leader wanted to talk about and shared with their colleagues on the System Daily Huddle. Uh, we've got four more stories in this section. The first one is from Mount Sinai Health System Laboratory Leadership across labs, across the entire health system. They chose this story for Diana Kandria from Mount Sinai Hospital. So we'll have God's favorite come on back and share this story for Diana. Congratulations, Diana. Here's the story. From the moment Diana Kandria stepped into the role of lab administrative manager in 2023, she has consistently exceeded expectations. Diana has been instrumental in streamlining our entire inventory system, ensuring that it operates efficiently and effectively. Her efforts in coordinating with the laboratory section leadership have fostered a collaborative and accountable environment. Diana's expertise in administrative tasks has not gone unnoticed with other labs within our health system seeking out her guidance to replicate her successful processes. True to her generous nature, Diana has willingly volunteered to take on these additional tasks, delivering outstanding results every time. Diana embodies the spirit of teamwork and excellence, and her remarkable contributions have had a profound impact on our organization. Thank you, Diana, for your unwavering commitment and for making a significant difference in our organization. Oh, thank you, God's favor. And Diana, yeah, this is similar to Jay's story. You were doing your work and then suddenly it's making a system-wide impact of others wanting to replicate what you've done and seek your guidance, which is just extraordinary. Um, and three times I caught in this story, three times you were recognized for making a significant impact. I really wanted you to know this is significant, uh, not only in your role, but in the organization as a whole. Um, so what aspect of, of your work are you most proud about this story to have contributed since joining Mount Sinai just 18 months ago? Is that right? 
That is correct, Steve. Thank you. Um, before I answer your question, I do want to congratulate all the uh, candidates that are being celebrated today. Um, so first, I must say that I am very humbled to be acknowledged, um, my contributions here at Sinai. It has truly been an incredible experience in such a short period of time. Um, very unexpected. Uh, I must say that my personality and relationship with others has truly been the key aspect of my success. Um, these skills have helped me work alongside others. Um, it's it's just who, like working with different people who come from different background, different discipline, work ethics, uh, personalities. So it has truly fostered a more cohesive and effective uh, environment to meeting our, our goals. And of course, in the Sinai timeline, as I like to say it, we all know it's everything has to everything has to happen immediately and like yesterday. So honestly, I'm truly blessed to have a team that understands how I work. Um, personally, I enjoy challenges and I enjoy showing others that regardless of the difficult, uh, how difficult things may be, together we can always meet our goal and our timeline. So mm -hmm. honestly, we support each other. We communicate with each other. We understand that in the end, we're all here for the same reason, for the same situation, which is to deliver excellent patient care and experience. So I just bring that to the other sites, to the other uh, buildings and the other departments wherever I'm, I'm needed. Yeah, really wonderfully said. And, you know, especially as a, a new hire, you know, 18 months, you probably feel like a veteran by now. <laughs> in just 18 months, you, you make so many accomplishments in such a short time. But that teamwork is so important. We encourage new hires to come join Beyond the Badge and, and see how to um, be successful here. What does above and beyond look like? And it is more than just doing my job well, which is what we encourage all of them. Take your job, your piece and do it well. But Definitely. those relationships are so critical. And, and you just explained it how early in your yeah. career here, building those relationships, making those connections was so key to these successes that you're it, having. Yeah, it definitely makes a huge difference. Um, a lot of people would ask me like, how long you've been here? And when I tell them, they're like shocked to see that it's such a short period of time. So definitely relationship is in your personality, understanding that even though you want to get something done right away, you still have to understand like the other department might have a different, mm -hmm. you know, urgency or might have something that is not as priority or what their priority is not your priority. Yeah. So being able to understand and work together towards that and just making it at the end of the day, it's really, really important Absolutely. and really what matters. Really wonderfully said. Thank you so much, Diana. Congrats on all Thank your you. accomplishments already. And I know, now I know, many, many more to come in your Mount Sinai career for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you, God's favor. We're going back to Mount Sinai, Queens. We'll bring Zachary Key back. This next story is from Queens for Nicole Olivari, although she was recognized by Network Practices Leadership. They've got such a close relationship there. We'll have our Mount Sinai, Queens uh, member, Zachary Key, read this story for Nicole. Hi. Thank you, Steve. So cardio neurotechnician Nicole Overi observed and recognized a need in the department and proactively created a form for daily monitoring of skin integrity and transmission of patient on continuous EEG. This is another example of Nicole taking the initiative to improve the quality of care and continuous support of our patients at, the Mount, at Mount Sinai, Queens. The form she created will now be used to observe patient skin and address any transmission issues on a daily basis. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, wonderful. Another example of being proactive and creating this new process. Uh, Nicole, um, tell us your experience during this story. What inspired you to take this action? And how have you seen it an improvement in the, in the results as this new process? And if you're talking what you were on, you mute. mute. Can you there hear you. me? Yes. Oh, now we can. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry. I was a little late. <laughs> um, thank you so much for honoring me. Um, Queens, we are upcoming with neurology, so we just kind of have to stay on top of everything. Um, we're a growing practice, and I can't take all the credit. Uh, my other two coworkers, we kind of just stood together and, like, we need to come up with something to cover ourselves. You know, we do two departments here, and it's been working. I mean, we have to, you know, check the patients and educate the nurses as well because, you know, neurology is growing here. And I mean, that's really what it is. 
Well, I love it. I mean, the more of our employees, and again, that class is watching, you know, it's not a, well, this is how it's done. This is what we have to deal with. This is the process. But being proactive and being problem solvers and being agile and being creative, that's why creativity is one of our Mount Sinai values. We need to be creative and coming up with new, better processes. Mount Sinai always wants to be the first. And again, that's not just in discovering cures to diseases. It's in every interaction, in every department, in every way. We can find that better way. We find a way, literally. So way. this is a great example of it. Way. Yeah. Are you <laughs> going to say it? We find a way? This is an example of yes, finding can. a way to improve the care of your patients. Really wonderful. Thank, thank you so much, Nicole. Great story. Okay. And thank you, Zach. We've got two more. I'm going to bring Erica on for one more. We're going, she's covering Mount Sinai Morningside Ambulatory, who recognized Debbie Persaud with a spotlight. So here's Debbie. Hi. And let's bring Hi. Erica back for this story. And then we'll have one more for Nina Thousand after that. Great. Debbie Prasad has been with the Mount Sinai Health System for 33 years. But when the department she previously worked in closed, we were fortunate to have her placed in our adult outpatient psychiatry department at the Harlem Health Center. Debbie's dedication and perseverance, coupled with her willingness to learn, led her to be quickly promoted from administrative assistant to office manager. Ever since her promotion, she's been excelling in the daunting task of filling both roles. Though the workload at times may be consuming, Debbie always remains friendly, courteous, resourceful, and willing to help. She's always going above and beyond to assist our staff with their needs to ensure they are able to provide safe and equitable care to patients. She plays an integral part in the day-to-day -day operations of our new Harlem Health Center facility, and we are very grateful to have Debbie as a leader on our team. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Erica. Debbie, you know, it must be so challenging, 33 years experience, to move into a new department and a new role after, after all that uh, experience somewhere else. And similar to the Rivington Center we, we recognized earlier, an employee from there, this is the brand new facility in Harlem. Uh, so it's excellent to hear a story coming out of that, that new location. Um, what focus or mindset helped guide you to such great success through this transition into a new area? Well, I feel blessed to be honored today. And I came into the department with a positive attitude my approach was to make my job a success, and I could not have done it without my coworkers and my office manager. I give thanks to everyone who noticed me and commented on a great job that I've been doing. Uh, special thanks to my office manager who had confidence in me and supported me all along the way. I will continue to do what I have been doing to make my department run as e efficiently as possible. And mm -hmm. congratulations to all you, all the honorees today. Oh, thank you, Debbie. And um, I just love to hear your approach that you're going to go into this transition, so much experience in another area and saying, I'm going to do this and we're going to bring positivity and that courage into it. And you see the results when you brought that mindset, that belief in yourself into it to do your best. And immediately your team up there is recognizing you and appreciating the impact you're having with the group. It's it's incredible. And, and I love to, to read about it. And I loved hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Debbie. And thanks to your whole team up there for your for their support for you. And one more story I'm going to bring in. This is a digital and technologies partner. Uh, digital and technology partners story for Nina Thousand. So I'm going to have one of our system committee members, Alyssa G and Andrea, come on and read this story for Nina. Hi, Nina. Hello. Thank you, Steve. Nina Thousand joined digital and technology partners in 2002, just as we went live with Mount Sinai Queens. As a former Epic employee with both professional and technical billing experience, Nina quickly helped stabilize Mount Sinai Queens and assisted with some redesign and optimization of the Mount Sinai Queens build. She then assumed the lead to develop more robust testing for claims with Mount Sinai Morningside and West, leading to a significantly improved implementation. Also of note, she led the initiative to improve the designs of work queues correctly, improve stakeholder engagement, and assisted in reviewing all incoming services requests to triage tickets to the correct team or analyst, leading to improved timeframes on resolving issues. As Mount Sinai Hospital, Brooklyn, and Beth Israel approached, 
Her leadership continued with improvements in most areas of testing for one EPIC. As one of our most senior leaders in contributing to the success of one EPIC, Nina continues to provide leadership in all areas of responsibility. Uh, thanks, Alyssa. And, and Nina, to me, the two uh, things that are standing out to me is one, you're everywhere, all over our entire system making a difference. And two, you're incredibly busy. <laughs> That's a yeah. lot, a lot of work going on. Um, so in your two years at Mount Sinai, um, you know, your work's impacted hospitals throughout our health system. Of the many projects and improvements you've led so far in your time at Mount Sinai, what are some of the results you're, you're most proud of and why? Um, I think, like I said, the testing, getting some of this testing in place, implementing some policies and procedures for documentation and helping us analysts talk to other analysts. We get tickets coming in from all of you all, all over the place. Do this, do that. And sometimes you're not talking with each other. So we have to be that middleman being like, wait a second, somebody just asked me to work it this way. So we leave little notes and trails all throughout the system so we can communicate with each other to make sure that we're not undoing something that somebody had just performed. The other thing that I worked really hard on was I created some office hours with our offshore teams. And I really helped to bring them up to speed to use that same tools, that same set of tools to be able to communicate with us while they're supporting the system while we're sleeping. You know, we can still be hand in hand, making sure that we're working together to get to a common goal. Right. I do want to call out that I feel a little bit like the lone wolf here as the only DTP analyst. It was very um, inspiring to listen to all the other stories and to hear about all of the patient facing uh, fantastic care that is being provided at Mount Sinai. Um, and I, and I wish that we could see, be more impacted by yeah. that. You know, in the back end, we're kind of behind the scenes and it's it's good to hear how much we're affecting the patient experience, et cetera. Right. Well, as we um, said, and beyond the badge, the stories come in a rotation. So digital and technology yes. partners has their turn and we yes. have a Queens and West. And this, so um, every time you're the one out of the you know month and a half or so in that rotation to, to be shared this month. And we often have one a, one a show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really wonderful. Thank you you know, insights into the work. It's like you're a private investigator. You hear, it's not just taking one person's story, but I've got to tie that to all the other stories I've heard and where yes. I'm getting notes and looking through and really examining it. It's opening our eyes to to that layer uh, that's yes. involved when you reach out to digital and technology partners. So what mm -hmm. else is being considered in that work? Yeah. Thank for you sure. for sharing that insight with us. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. We are at a close of episode 30. Again, over 600 stories have been shown in our 30 episodes, but keep coming back. There are limitless stories. If you know the tens of thousands of star recognitions that come in a year, the tens of thousands of patient letters that come in every year, the 43,000 unique individual employees that work at Mount Sinai, we're creating moments and experiences every day. We will never run out of inspirational stories. Uh, so keep coming back to Beyond the Badge. I want to thank uh, everyone who joined today, and I want to give one more congratulations to everyone who is honored. Thank you for going beyond the badge in your role so greatly that it led your senior leadership to share your story on the System Daily Huddle.